Hey everyone, Brian Von Vier here, back at it again with another set of D&D stories. Today, we've got D&D Players. What was your favorite moment in D&D and why? Part 1. First time DMing was for a one-shot. Players fought and slew a fire giant warlord. The killing blow was dealt by the group's warlock. I described as a fiery chasm opened beneath the giant as immense black iron chains shot out from its body to four runic markings that marked the boundary of the chasm and dragged the corpse through the hell portal. Later, the portal opens to reveal a staircase out of which climbs a pit fiend dragging the lifeless body of the fire giant behind. Guess what fuckers? It's hidden boss time. Roll for initiative. You are a sick, sick DM, and I love it. Hands down, from my first campaign we played, our DM had played one other campaign and started watching Critical Role, so he offered to DM for us if we agreed to play. None of us really wanted to, so eh, we reluctantly agreed. The party was me, a half-elf bard named Little Biggie Pump, Name later changed when I took it more seriously. A dragonborn warlock named Cloud, who was kind of a problem because his player just wanted to be as strong as possible. A human paladin named Gregor, and a treant cleric named Leafstand. We journeyed from place to place creating a ton of really fun memories and inside jokes. There was a failed Molotov cocktail, an attempt to seduce a married woman, Cloud couldn't control his pact, and kept killing or almost killing innocents, and much more. But the best moment was when we were exploring a lich's lair to rescue a rival adventuring party and find some treasure. We ended up saving only one of the rival adventuring party and helping him out. The final battle was with a corrupted adventuring party from years ago that the lich was using as a puppet. We ended up defeating them and journeyed into the main part of the lair. We explored and tried to find a way to defeat it when someone broke something they shouldn't have, waking up the lich and causing him to destroy his lair, which was in the middle of a mountain. So we ran, and all of us were pretty much close to dead, so it was high stakes. Gregor got hit by a falling rock, falling unconscious, but Leaf Stand picked him up and we kept going. We got to the entrance, which was towards the top of the mountain, and in a weaponry. As the DM was describing the room, he mentioned shields on the wall. Without thinking, my bard grabbed the shield on the wall, said, see y'all at the bottom, and jumped out the entrance, using the shield as a surfboard to head down the mountain. The rest of our party followed, and we all made it out safely. Easily the most fun I've had during a session. I have two. One is from our last campaign, and the other is from the first. In the last campaign, we had our first encounter with the big bad evil guy at level 2. We had just accidentally unsealed the abyss. In the campaign, the abyss is something that wants to consume the multiverse, and we headed back to the hub and encountered shadows which drained Hallow of his strength, causing him to die. Then, the shadow beast appeared. I knew I couldn't escape as I was too close to take an opportunity attack, which would kill me as I was at 5 hit points. So I asked one of our other party members to throw a pine crystal at me, and forced a wild magic surge on me and the shadow beast. Don't remember what I got, but the beast became enraged and started attacking anything close to it. Unfortunately, I was close to it, and took a fist through the stomach. I asked my DM if I could flavory my death, and he was okay with it, so I described how my character glared at the beast, and his final words were, fuck you, as he detonated the explosives implanted in him because of his backstory, which set off the 23 sticks of dynamite that Hollow had on his corpse, dealing 117 damage, leaving him at 22 HP as the party fled. Now, then in the first campaign I was in, we first need some background on another player. Heliodor rolled pretty high in most of his stats except Charisma, which he got a 3 in. So he was basically the most powerful wizard, but when it came to social situations, he was worthless, but he was funny. So what happened was we entered a bar called the Golden Fiddle, some kind of musical instrument, important later. 
so Heliodore had the bright idea of casting Charm Person on the barkeep, which <laughs> failed, and it turned out that said barkeep was the devil. Oh, I like this already. He sent us on a quest to regain the Golden Fiddle from a vampire lord that stole it. After getting through the skyscraper and surviving bandits, mimics, etc., we reached the top and Roman knocked on the door. When the vampire lord asked who was there, he responded with, Housekeeping! And the vampire lord let us in. He was pissed off that we lied and was ready to fight, but I didn't think we'd be able to survive as we low level, and as such I convinced the lord to settle this without violence, and the musical competition began. He was using the golden fiddle, and we were using normal ones. After some difficult roles, we successfully bested him in the musical competition, and as he got up to fight anyway, he tripped and fell to his death. So, my favorite moment in D&D is when the party member decided to try and find out how bread was made in the place they were in. Then a character got very upset because of his character being considered a disappointment to their family. Like, how does a conversation about bread turn into that? That was pretty recent also. In my first campaign, my event that was me and my party got taken prisoner in a tower with a lot of cells filled with humans. So we broke out and got a mob of about 200 humans to charge down the stairs and at the bottom a bone devil burst in and started killing all of the humans and the drows that were there. Initiative was rolled, the fight went on and my cousin put an acid vial on his arrow and shot its wings with a high enough roll so its wings melted. And I grabbed my great axe, slid underneath the behemoth, and cut its underbelly open, and all of its organs fell on my face. This story now gets brought up every time someone mentions this topic. We were doing a one-shot adventure, and we eventually made it into a bar where there was some gambling going on in the back. Hush, hush. So since I had a deck of many cards on my character, I join in and sneak some cards into my hand. Oh no. The entire in-game table stares at me for a moment. The DM then tells me the cards they were using have red backs, while mine have blue. I almost talk my way out of it, blaming it on the person next to me, uh, but it didn't work. So I grab as much money out of the center as I can and bolt out of the bar. The other person I was playing with didn't want to leave without stealing something too, so of course the most logical course of action is to rip the door off the bar and take it away. <laughs> Why did you do that? The DM was nice enough to let him get away with it. So we proceed to the nearest armor shop that does custom orders, and he asks the blacksmith to turn the door into a helmet? Why not a shield? He asked for extra money due to the shady nature of the request. Uh, we come back later the next day, and there's a wooden helmet with a miniature door on the front with a doorknob used to open this, just the front of it. And from that point on, the helm of knobs <laughs> made an appearance in every single adventure we've played since. This story is just tickling me all over, and I love it. The NPCs and PCs. Myself, PC. Jeff, PC. Owner 1, NPC. Turvy, NPC. Guards, NPC times 3. Freddy is a PC. Frank, PC. Owner 2, NPC. Owner 3, NPC. Familiar, NPC. And uh, Owner 4, NPC. So my pal, calling him Jeff, playing my half-brother. He cast invisibility on himself went into a high-end magic store with Turvey after it shut down for the day and stole 1,000 gold as well as a bag of holding. Then, the owner, number one, woke up and Jeff teleported to the closest shop, keeping invisibility because of rule of cool, but leaving Turvey behind. Jeff then tries to steal a magical belt, but when he touches it, the store lights up and the guards outside see him, as well as waking shop owner number two, a female, important later. Owner number one begins to take Turvey to jail, but then Freddy turns himself and Turvey invisible and they retreat after Frank decks shop owner one, making them unconscious. Jeff gives owner number two a total of 500 gold pieces to let him walk free and they all run to me. I was the getaway driver and we drove off for about an hour. After making camp, Jeff and Frank agree to go back. Jeff wanted more and Frank was honor bound. When they get back, Jeff ties up a third shop owner, Crazy Einstein guy who sells potions and drugs, steals some potions <laughs> and drugs, and then goes to the fourth and final store. 
Then there is a guard and a familiar. Jeff hits the guard, familiar hits Jeff. Jeff hits guard again, guard steals 23 HP from Jeff. Then the fourth shop owner comes out and reveals himself to be the brother of the second shop owner, his sister. He boops Jeff on the nose, making him fall unconscious, and then gives him to Frank. They say goodbye, and the heist is over. This is my favorite story because it's just a moment that was so fun to watch unfold, mostly as an onlooker, and it was a testament to how good the DM was and how good the players were. Unfortunately, we never continued that campaign, but it was a heck of a lot of fun with some other stories, which we would love to hear about, so please do share. A homebrew campaign from one of my friends as his first time DMing. Campaign had been kinda railroaded until we had recently gone to a city most of the PCs needed to get to. My character, who is a very stoic and jaded father figure of the group, is also a skeleton chronogy wizard. In life, he was a human wizard in training and was in line to marry a princess. His only family alive was his mother and his cousin. One rebellion from the princess's own brother later, his first only love is captured, frozen inside a crystal. His mother burned at the stake and the brother, who started the rebellion, dead. In a magical accident to bring the dead rebel leader back, my character's human form was turned into a skeleton and his mortal enemy was turned into a demigod. He found a letter after his transformation that his cousin had fled the city in the rebellion and that she would be having a child. For nearly 75 years, he had been searching for his long lost family. Flashing forward, the party searches a graveyard in the city and my character sees the graves of his cousin and her protector slash husband. Deep in sorrow, he told the party who she was and they comfort the boned mage. The party leaves and enters a seemingly abandoned mansion, but hears music playing from a piano somewhere within. The piano is played by an old woman who greets the party. One of the party members asks the name of the old woman, thinking that she is part of their backstory, but she replies with the name of what would be my character's cousin's daughter's name. My character immediately steps in and asks what her parents' names were, Replying with exactly the right names and telling my character that they passed, my character informs the party and NPC of who he is. Up until this point, his name was kind of a mesh between his new form and a name given by his kingdom. He finally spoke his true name to everyone and the old woman recognized the name from stories their mother told her. She hugged the skeleton and he stayed frozen for a moment, then he hugged back. We later learned that session that she had children and grandchildren, that her son ran the city we were in, and that one of the other PCs is actually arranged to marry the grandchild. I nearly cried at that hug, and I ended the session with him in a chair, smiling into the sun setting in the distance. He had accomplished one goal, but his journey is not yet complete. May his family rest in peace. Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here checking in after the vid. Please leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified whenever we post a new video or go live. If you'd like to submit a story to us, go to r slash Mr. Ripper, and if you want to see even more juicy content, please go over to our secondary channel called Riptovia. Links are in the description below. And of course, come say hi to me, Brian Von Vier, your favorite narrator and voice actor from Ohio, over on Twitch and on YouTube. All the love everybody, be safe, and we will see you next time. Bye for now.